We're almost there. Sub-level 7 of the subterranean complex. Soon to be the conquered complex. If memory serves, this sub-level contains a dangerous new enemy. Oh yeah, it does. I'd recognize that walking sound anywhere. Unfortunately, this place is also filled to the brim with bomb rocks. So we're going to have to be very, very careful. And right there is our new friend. Say hello to the Gatling Groink. The Gatling Groink might look silly, but don't be fooled. It is anything but. You see, it's got a cannon, and it likes to shoot things. It will either shoot three small pellets or one large pellet. And usually, when the Pikmin get hit by said shots, they will uh, scatter. But, if the Pikmin are hit in the absolute center of the blast, they'll be killed, but we don't have to worry about that because it was an idiot and decided to walk off the edge. That's what you really have to do against these guys, if you are on a metallic sublevel, mind you. If not, well, then things are going to get a little trickier. Let's go ahead and activate those bomb rocks because this careening dirigi bug is going to be a jerk. Because careening dirigi bugs are always jerks. Uh-oh. Gotta get away, gotta get away. Did anyone die? No, they didn't. Okay, only Olimar got hit. Woo! Well, that was something. The first Gatling Groink was easy, but the second one, not so much. Yes, there are two of them. So as I said earlier, usually the Pikmin will get scattered when they're hit by the shots, but if they're hit in the absolute center, they will get killed. So how do we get around this? Well, you can't attack them from the front because of that shield protecting them. So what you really want to do is hit them from the side. And because they are constantly on the move, you don't have the liberty of sneaking up on them. So the question is, how the heck are you supposed to beat these guys? Well, the answer is simple. Use a purple spray. However, make sure that they are taken out before it expires, because if not, their health will regenerate. Yep, just like the spotty bull bears, you can't kill Gatling Groinks. Their health will slowly go back up to full capacity. And when their health is fully restored, they come back to life. Not fun! Thankfully, they are very rare enemies, but we're going to be seeing a lot more of them later on in our adventure. And I'm not looking forward to that. We should consider ourselves luck lucky that they've only appeared in one game so far. Alright, first treasure held by the Gatling Groink is the Indomitable CPU. Yet another sort of computer chip part. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be some sort of processor. But don't call me out on that. I believe there are a grand total of three treasures here. There's the hole to the next sub-level. That's always helpful. Again, what is with all of these bomb rocks? It's annoying. I haven't mentioned this about bomb rocks, and I'm going to now. Pikmin will attack bomb rocks if they are nearby. So if that happens, be sure to whistle them back to safety. Because you don't want them committing suicide. That would be a bad thing. Well, I think I've explored just about every square inch of this sub-level. And for some reason, I can't find a treasure. Let's see if it's down here all the way. Yep, I see it. I see it. It's a treetop apple juice lid. Oh, come on! Cut me some slack, game! Talk about being out of the frying pan and going into the fire. Ugh. I thought I was done with all of those volatile dweevils in sub-level 5. Ugh. Anywho, I think there's 
one more treasure somewhere around here. The problem, ah, right there. It's way over there. But it's littered with bomb rocks and I'm fairly certain that corner is booby trapped. So we'll need to tread cautiously. Thirst activator. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> Usually apple juice is something that you drink when you're thirsty, maybe when you're a little younger, but uh, I like fruit juice. In fact, my favorite fruit juice is orange juice and cranberry juice mixed together, filled with antioxidants and a really good soda substitute. So if you're craving soda, settle for fruit juice instead. It's much better for you and filled with less sugar. Uh-oh. Oh! Louie wasn't quite quick enough. Well, here's our last treasure of the sublevel. At least I think it's our last treasure. I should also mention that on rare occasions, the wandering Gatling Groink will not appear. Or is it the Gatling Groink in the turret? I don't know. But one of them won't appear, but it's random. Ah, come! Stupid, volatile dweevils. Why does every single corner of the sublevel have to be booby trapped? It's annoying. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the third treasure. It is yet another roll of tape. And there's one egg off in the distance that I forgot to crack. So I'm going to take care of that after this is loaded into the pod. Worth 60 Pocos, this is the Furious Adhesive. And take a look at our total, 9,911. We could very well surpass 10,000 Pocos by the time the cave is over and done with. All right, no more treasure on this sublevel. More nectar to be found, but that's not an issue because everyone is already flowered up. With all of the explosives taken care of, the eggs shattered and the treasures collected, I think we're ready to go. And the hole to the next sublevel is right over there. I have to ask, if this sublevel really is floating in the air, then if we're going down a hole to the next sublevel, how are they connected? I have to ask. Maybe they're pocket dimensions, I don't know. But one thing I do know is that we are on sub-level 8. So we're nearly there. And thankfully, this is another rest sub-level. Once again, nothing but eggs and candy pop flowers to be found here. And this time, we've got violet candy pop buds, which is good. It's very good. Uh, we need... Oh, and there are also queen candy pop buds as well. Most excellent. I want to use the first Queen Candy Bot Bud for the Red Pikmin. And we'll also use some Reds for this first Violet Candy Pot Bud. We're going to need quite a few Purples for the upcoming sublevel, as well as a few Red Sprays. Or Spicy Sprays, call them what you like. But I should warn you, we're definitely going to be in for a fight. <laughs> And if you've ever played this game, then you know exactly what I am talking about. I want to see if there are any more Queen Candy Pop Buds. Ah, yep, there's one in the distance. All right, I think we're going to use this one for the yellows. These Queen Candy Pop Buds are also great if you've suffered a lot of Pikmin losses because they can somewhat compensate for that. A couple more sprouts to be plucked. Very nice. I didn't think about this until now, but yeah, we could repay the entire debt by the time the cave is over and done with. I wasn't really checking my uh, Poco meter, but uh, yeah, that could very well happen. I know what the treasure is at the end of the sub-level, but I don't exactly know how valuable it is. If it is worth at least 89 Pocos, then we'll have cleared the debt. 
but we can focus on that later. Right now, let's go ahead and fill her up. Just fill her up. Three reds and two yellows should do. And that is it. Thankfully, there are a lot of eggs here. And trust me when I say this, the more flowers you have, the better. Because we are going to need Pikmin that can run, run, run. Run like there's no tomorrow. I know I said the word run a bunch of times, but I mean it. Well, it looks like all of our squadron is flowered up, so now we need to see if we can get some more sprays out of these eggs. Oh, we got a purple spray. Very nice. Although, in this lighting, it looks more gray than purple. Um, we only have six compared to the 13 red sprays we have. Um, but I'm sorry to say that purple sprays are not going to be particularly helpful for this upcoming battle. In fact, they aren't very helpful on bo against bosses as a whole. They're better used against enemies. So, uh, yeah, I just want to do a quick check to make sure we didn't lose any eggs. And I'm going to quickly check the map to see if we've traveled through everywhere. I think we have. And there don't appear to be any eggs there, but there is a geyser, so you can always retreat if your squadron has been hurting. All right, I think we are ready to go. We have 91 Pikmin with us. And one more enemy to defeat in the subterranean complex. But trust me when I say this, the boss is unlike anything we've faced thus far. Subterranean complex, sub-level nine. And look at that, it's an arena in every sense of the word. Final floor! Here we go! The ship was indeed correct. There is a machine down here. But before we approach it, we need to find a safe spot to hide. Uh, this raised piece of metal should do nicely. It should serve as an excellent makeshift barrier. Both Olimar and Louie are around the same, have around the same amount of health. So, with one captain, you need to hide behind this metal barricade. And make sure you are hidden well. The next thing we want to do is we want to activate a purple spray. And now that that's happened, when you're ready, attack the boss! This is the second Arachnor boss we have encountered. Say hello to the man at legs! But like any other Arachnoid bosses, does it stomp you? No! It uses a freaking machine gun! Needless to say, this is incredibly dangerous. When it retracts its firearm, you need to head back to the center, and then you need to throw Pikmin on it when it lowers. Um, needless to say, this boss can be very very, very tricky. All right, I'm gonna immediately activate another red spray because I don't wanna get caught in the crossfire. The best way to inflict a large amount of damage on it is to throw Pikmin directly on top of it as it emerges from the ground. However, this doesn't work in the new play version because the man at legs is invincible when rising from the ground. And thankfully, it's perfectly content on shooting Louie rather than Olimar. But make no mistake, I lost God knows how many Pikmin the first time I played this boss. It's no joke. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez, oh, this could get a little dicey. Come on, run, little purple Pikmin, run! Oh, wow, he made it. Very nice. Made it like a champ. Okay. Don't stray too far from the center because you don't want the man at legs 
shooting at you from close up because it can quite literally hit anywhere. You'll also need to know how to use your C stick for this fight. Those skills will really be put to the test. Okay, it's almost done. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! There we go! Kaboom! I don't care if there was lag. That man at legs is gone, and he left behind a treasure. That mechanized monstrosity is no longer functional. An insect and a machine forming a symbiotic relationship? Life forms here are beyond odd. Initiating area scan. Glass sphere detected. You can definitely do this fight without red sprays, but it's going to take a lot longer. And if that's the case, you might want to use red Pikmin instead of purples. It's just that purples do the most, most damage, but they are also by far the slowest. And that can make avoiding the man at legs shots a difficult task. Oh, I can't believe I did that without any losses. That was incredible. Nevertheless, he left behind a light bulb for us, and this light bulb is going to come in real handy. Notice how the entire area got brighter? This is why. Yes, we did surpass 10,000 Pocos with the Stellar Orb. If I combine this glass sphere with the synthetic sun I have been secretly developing... Processing complete. I have manufactured a solar system. The artificial sunlight it emanates will brighten underground areas. Yeah, no longer do we have to walk around in the dark. The areas are much brighter, allowing us to see our surroundings more easily. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and check out that uh, solar system right there. It's in the upper right corner. We also have the Metal Suit Z that we obtained from the Pileated Snagret. Only four treasures in the exploration kit left to obtain. But we can worry about that later because... We have emerged victorious over the mechanized monstrosity that is the man at legs. Get it? It's called man at legs. It's a pun on man at arms. All right. 16 treasures. No deaths. The cave is complete. Most excellent indeed. And with the conclusion of the subterranean complex, we're done. We repaid the debt, and all is well. <laughs> You've repaid the entire debt! Heck yeah! Mission complete! You've earned 10,000 Pocos! Now Hokotate Freight will be prosperous and debt-free until the end of time, probably. Prepare to blast off! We return to Hokotate triumphantly!
Yep. All that effort, and Louie got left behind. And that expression pretty much says it all. I'm pretty sure most of you figured this out, but we're not done. Not by a long shot. In fact, we've roughly completed half of the game. The first half is dedicated to recovering the debt, and now the second half is to rescue Louie, wherever he may be. I just want to say something about these credits. They are freaking gorgeous! I mean, look at the detail on these plants and flowers, and that water! That water looks real! And keep in mind, this was back in 2004 on the GameCube. I stand by what I said earlier. This is easily one of the most beautiful looking games on the GameCube, and I think it really pushed the limits as far as graphics were concerned. Because you definitely feel like you're there with Louie exploring the great outdoors. Well, I guess that's what happened. Louie fell asleep on a flower and missed his flight. But that's a little inconsistent because in the cutscene, when the ship announces they've repaid the debt, he's clearly shown there standing with Olimar. So what caused Olimar to forget him? Maybe Louis wasn't paying attention. I don't know. But he's stretching and he's waving goodbye at us. Well, our adventure is not yet over. While it is true that we repaid Hokotate Freight's death, we have a much more challenging task ahead of us. And that is rescuing Louie. But first, we take a look at our statistics. No Pikmin lost so far, which is good. The most I've ever lost in this game is probably around 23 or so at this point. But that's because I was playing the game for the very first time. 222 red Pikmin, 138 yellow Pikmin, 112 blues, 70 whites, and 80 purples. 80 purples. That's pretty freaking good as far as I'm concerned. Total playtime is about 7 hours and 4 minutes. And we're going to save. We're definitely going to resume the expedition and return to the planet. Thanks to you, our company has been saved. Hurrah! What? what? There's still more treasure? Good gravy. If we collect it all, we'll be filthy rich. Louie! Or not. Where's Louie? What? You lost him? In that case... I shall go. We have a new captain, and not only that, we've unlocked a new area. Upon repaying the debt, the fourth and final area is unlocked, the Wistful Wild. Before we end the video, let's go ahead and check the Piclopedia. The obvious journal entry we want to establish is the Man at Legs. And take a look, now we have empty slots containing all of the enemies we have not yet encountered. But let's start with the Man at Legs. Man at Legs, Pseudo-Arachnia Navaronia, Arachnorb family. This species of the Arachnorb family fuses with machinery at a crucial point in the maturation process giving it the ability to fire energy bursts from the launcher beneath its orbular torso. However, the man at legs itself is not in control of this weapon. Instead, the mechanical portions of its structure appear to automatically acquire and attack targets. The man at legs has a gentle disposition, and as a member of the arachnoid species, it has no natural enemies. It is particularly difficult to understand why this species would develop such awesome offensive capabilities, leading to rumors among the scientific community that it was the machinery that approached the arachnoid that proposed the symbiotic relationship. Yeah, straight out of a science fiction movie, isn't it? Alright, let's go ahead and uh, check out the bumbling snitch bug because this journal entry is rather funny. Bumbling Snitchbug, Scarpanica Dufenia, 
Scarpinid family. This is a variety of snitch bug. Its most interesting characteristic is that it likes to snitch leaders. Yet barring wanton carelessness or incompetence, leaders are not easily captured. Any leader caught by this creature is clearly an idiot, which is why this creature is also known as the exposing snitch bug. There are several known varieties of snitch bugs, but research is stagnated despite it being such an interesting species. And let's check out the uh, Louis entry on the munged weevil. Exposure to even extreme heat doesn't seem to rid this creature of deposits of potent gas. It's probably best for everyone if you avoid eating this hazardous fare. <laughs> Insightful as always, Louis. Let's check the treasure hoard. Did we collect any uh, treasure series? Yes, we did. You've collected the Hyper Technology series. Everyone loves a new gadget. And is that it? Yes, it is. All right, let's go ahead and check out the vacuum processor. We recently found all sorts of mechanical parts scattered around a cave. The walls and floor were constructed of solid steel. Perhaps it was once a great military fortress? I decided to name it the Subterranean Complex. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the solar system as well. Oh, I also want to check out the fossilized Earth today, because this entry is pretty funny. This dead beast has the form of an animal, yet it is encased in an organic compound. I've concluded that it is a groundbreaking biological discovery. The ship says it's nothing more than a wooden statue. I wish it had more of an imagination. No, then it would probably talk even more than it does now. That would be bad. <laughs> That's really funny. All right, let's check out that solar system, or the stellar orb as it's known. The technology behind this impressive gadget is totally unknown to my people. It appears to replicate the intense solar beams of the sun. Space exploration has given me a, ga a ghostly power. Maybe I'll use this orb to catch a few rays. Eh, not a reasonable, not an unreasonable thought, but I think we're going to go ahead and end the video for now. So next time on Let's Play Pikmin 2, we are going to head back to the Valley of Repose. See you guys next time.